Good afternoon, Brokers Playbook, to all our brothers and sisters across Canada and across the United States, across North America, really. Uh, a, a massive uh, greeting, and we are so excited to share a topic today uh, that, that will really resonate with most of us. Uh, Laura, welcome to back to Brokers Playbook this afternoon. Thank we have you. a very exciting guest in Keith Roy, how are you? What's going on? Oh, I'm just dandy. Thank you. I'm uh, firing up the Matrix Mortgage team for Q4, um, working on a lot of PR stuff and trying to mobilize those millennial buyers who seem to keep thinking that things are going to get cheaper. So, uh, yeah, just coming up with some strategies. But I'm really excited for our guest today, Keith Roy, who figured out how to step away from his email and his phone and for the sky not to fall while he did it. Yeah, so, so I think the number one complaint that uh, any real estate or mortgage broker uh, in, in North America has is that that race against time, that always that, that compulsive need to respond to every email at any time of the day, whether it's, uh, it's 6.30 a.m., or 11 p.m., an email comes in, and we have this sickness, this this need. Ever since Blueberry put email on the phone, to that red that red light kicks in, or that notification pops off that you have to run to your phone, answer it, which ultimately leads to burnout, exhaustion, bad relationships, um, and less productivity, uh, rather than being easier to accomplish more. Yeah. Um, I, I want to bring in Keith. Keith, Keith has entered the studio. Um, I'm, I'm going to bring in Keith. Uh, Keith, welcome to Broker's Playbook, my man. Uh, we, we just finished doing a quick introduction. Uh, speaking of you, uh, you've been in the business 15 years. Uh, you're, you're based out of Metro Vancouver. You have a little bit of a background uh, in Ontario. Take a quick second. Uh, give a quick introduction on yourself. Uh, and we'll get straight into the sizzle, uh, and hopefully you can drop some amazing value on how we can all turn down a little, put the systems in place that we need to do more as human beings uh, without feeling that guilt or stress. Yeah. Hey, Sammy. And hey, Laura. I um, Look, I'm Keith Roy. I'm a realtor in Vancouver. If if you can't find me by putting my name into Google, I've made a mistake. So if you want to read my bio, you can go there. You can learn all about me. Um, I've, I've been doing this for 15 years. I've spoken in front of thousands of realtors. I've trained on five continents. Uh, I'd love to bring some sizzle to the show and uh, happy to work people through how they can. You know, I never thought I'd be the guy who preached time off. Brokers hate me, right? The, the, the broker owners hate this conversation. Agents leaving for months at a time, or God forbid, days at a time. Um, but let's uh, let's just get right into it and get some some information in front of people. Let's do it, my man. So you've been able to take an entire year off, uh, and, and, I, and I think and I think that's a, a big big task. Uh, I've been in the business the same amount of years as you, my friend. Uh, we do sell a lot of real estate. I do take time off every year. I took three weeks off uh, just in August uh, where I went to the motherland, which is Greece for me. Uh, had an amazing time. Came back. Did I pay for it? Eh, I always have lots of catch up to do. But I trust my team. I trust my systems. Uh, and we are a very, very systems oriented team. Tell well, me let a me, little bit about wait, let me, Simeon, let me ask you a question. While you were away, did you have your phone with you? I, I did have my phone and my laptop with me. Okay. Um, did you check your email while you're away? Um, I, I did. I did intermittently. Yes. Okay. So you took what is the realtor definition of a vacation, uh -huh. which is working from a location slightly nicer than the one in which you typically reside. Got you. Nailed it. Got you. That, that's how realtors roll. They just. I'm going to go work somewhere nicer, like special life, hashtag blessed. Uh, here's my laptop, my feet, my beer. It's not a vacation. It, it's time away. It's a change of scenery. It's a change of pace. It might be a reduction in work, but it's not a vacation. And we should stop confusing those things. It's not time to truly rest and recharge. So, so maybe let's start with a definition of what that should look like, Keith. 
Yeah. What does so, your vacation look like? So what Dan does your Sullivan, vacation look like to Keith? Yeah, D Dan Sullivan's a, a entrepreneurial coach based out of Toronto, runs Strategic Coach, and and Dan Sullivan preaches that you need to have a twenty four hour period at least once a week with uh, no work contact, like no contact, no engagement in work in any way. And that 24 hour period should be midnight to midnight. Cause then you're, you know, you finish it all before bed. When you wake up, you go through the whole next day and you go back to bed before you look at anything work related again. And that, it, that is a true release. Now for me, there's trips. Sometimes I go on trips and I take work with me, but sometimes I go on vacation and I, I disappear. Uh, I will take a second phone with me so that I still have my vaccine QR code now and I can get on the airplane and I can, you know, pay for things with my Apple Pay and whatever I need to do. But my email is not on that phone and my text messages are off of that phone. And we've had to put some systems in place to make this work. But that's a real vacation where people just can't get a hold of you. And if, if there's an absolute emergency and let me clarify, there's no such thing as a real estate emergency. It's not real. That's made up in your head. That's not a thing. You would have learned about it in licensing. They didn't teach you that. It's because it doesn't exist. There's no such thing as a real estate emergency. So if one, someone wants to get a hold of you, you're probably not traveling alone. You've got a spouse, a relative. Give them, give the people who need you that phone number, and they'll be really reluctant to get a hold of you. And then you can have that true, honest to goodness break from work and a chance to recharge and refresh and think. And maybe, maybe if you're lucky, even get bored. I have yeah, a question I, I, for you. I don't know if I've ever been bored. So um, <laughs> it, it it took me uh, about six months to get bored. Nice, but I found it. I found my boredom one day. And what it was insight awesome. did you find when you took that break? What differences to the way that you approached work occurred after that break? Yeah. Well, let me go back and give you the start of how this, what precipitated all this. Uh, I, I'm i turning 40 this year. Actually, this week that we're recording, I'm turning 40. So big, big week for me. And uh, in 2018, I was having a pretty stressful year, end of 2017 into early 2018. And every time my phone rang, my chest would well up and I'd see a number and I was I was angry at my phone. I just wanted to throw it. I was yelling at people. Been I was there. cranky. Yeah, we've all been there. And I realized I need some time off. Like, typically, I would go away for Christmas every year for two or three weeks. We go down to Hawaii every year. And that can usually chill a man out. But I came back in January of 2018. And within five days, I was a complete ass. Again, I just fired back up. So I decided I need some actual time off. I really need to decompress. Two weeks didn't do it. I want to go for a year. I negotiated with my team. They said six months. I said a year. We got to eight months. They're better negotiators than I am, but they agreed on eight months away from me. So I was going to go in the summer. In June of that year, I was actually at a, a Richard Robbins conference. Richard's a great Canadian real estate trainer. And day two of the conference, I go out after the conference for dinner with Rich. We have a nice dinner, I have a big steak and all the sides and stuff. And then I went out, I closed two more deals that night. Day three of the conference, I wake up in the morning, six in the morning, I'm in the shower and I can't breathe. My chest is closing in on me like there's an elephant on top of me. And I'm, ah, ah, ah. and I, I call my wife, I'm like, Stephanie, come up here. And she comes up and she says, what's going on? And I said, Stephanie, we're not going to the conference. She says, why not? I said, I think I'm having a heart attack. We need to go to the hospital. 37 years old at the time. And so I get out, I very calmly get dressed, we get in the car, we drive to the hospital, I walk in, they're like, why are you here? I said, I think I'm having a heart attack. And they say, right this way, Mr. Roy. They walk me right in, start running tests, chest x-ray, EKG, ECG, give me some aspirin, uh, sit me down. But a half an hour later, we kind of figure it out. I have had a massive panic attack. Never happened to me before. I was gonna say. Had a, had a panic attack combined with probably an acid reflux attack from the steak the night before. And this just overwhelmed me. I was sent home, I sat on the couch for a couple of days and then continued on with my plans. And a couple of weeks after that, my wife and I uh, handed over the telephone, 
hand over the, the phone, the email, everything we got in the car. We drove from Vancouver to Toronto. We spent uh, six weeks, we spent four weeks across Canada, four weeks in Iceland, six weeks in Europe, a week in Asia, uh, three weeks in Singapore, three weeks in Australia, three weeks in New Zealand, and three months in Hawaii before I came back. Very much a changed person with a changed business. So that's what occurred. And the reason I want to share this message today is it's okay to go away is because it's worse if you don't go away. It's really bad, actually, if you don't go away. So going away is the right thing to do for yourself, for your team, uh, for your spouse, for your family. You need to do it. That's incredible. Um, and I guess, you know, I don't think anyone's going to argue with you that we need to be humans in our element and be in that explorative mode without a goal, without a carrot and without those regular life pressures just tugging at you every se five seconds. But the big question is how, my friend, did you <laughs> manage to turn off your email, turn off your phone and say good luck to your team? Yeah. So there's, there's a couple of systems you need to put in place. Uh, the first is you need to hire a decent assistant because you, you just need to take some of the load off yourself. And that for a lot of us, that might be enough to just like take the pressure level down where you don't need an eight month sabbatical to recover from years of work. The assistant's job is all the things that you're doing at night that could be done during the day. That's the kind of stuff your assistant should be doing. And I can, you know, I can have a whole other conversation on how to hire and what that looks like. And there's other training out there as well. But you need a decent assistant. Then you need to eliminate the email barrage that we suffer from, as well as the phone call barrage. So a couple quick things on this. One, I moved all my emails to a uh, a team email. So I have a personal email that I use, but all my public facing email goes to team at keithroy.com. And everybody on my team is copied on that email. And whoever is on that day, which is never me, but whoever's on that day, triages that email the way it needs to be dealt with. If it's just a quick reply, another realtor wants documents, someone's inquiring to see something, someone wants to book a listing appointment, wherever that email is going, they deal with it. So then it comes to me if it's a listing appointment and I'm working. The best way to stop email from coming in is to stop sending it. So I, I just I don't do a lot of outbound email because it produces a lot of inbound email. But once you kind of offload your personal email to a, a group that can triage it, you significantly reduce your own personal volume of email. You need to do the same thing with your phone number. So uh, what I structured years ago, uh, just as I was building a team and I had an assistant, we have a VoIP number, so a voice over IP phone number, that is our public facing number. We have a VoIP number that is our realtor facing number. So when you're booking a showing through showing time or touch base, that number shows up there. And those numbers are typically forwarded to someone else who's not me. So I've eliminated calls directly from the public inquiring about things. And I, I can call people back and I get back to them. And I've eliminated calls from other realtors, which are largely just tasks that they want me to do that someone else could do for me. And it also eliminates text messages because those all come through those channels. And then finally, you need to eliminate, and look, my cell phone's on the website. You can find it if you want it, but it's not in the advertising. It's not the one we push out there. And then finally, client communication, you need to eliminate the inbound client communication without losing the client relationship. And we've done this with WhatsApp. So every everybody's on WhatsApp at this point. It's rare that you know one out of 10, maybe an older client doesn't use WhatsApp. We will have all of our listings in a WhatsApp channel. So we've got one, two, three Main Street listed. The, the seller, which is a husband and a wife are both in there. I'll be in there. My assistant will be in there. Now I'm running a team with three agents and three assistants. All six of us are in there. So let's say we need to book photography. We go on the WhatsApp channel. Hey, we're going to come over on Thursday at 9 a.m. for photography. Client says, okay. Both husband and wife are in the same chat, so I don't have to talk to two people. Assistant books it. They go. They meet the photographer. Photography's done. Photos come out. We let them know photos are in. We're going to send them a link with photos. All of this communication happens. The showings get booked in there. The feedback gets put in there. All of this happens under my watchful eye, but without my participation, which means I can just show up every couple of days with like a thumbs up emoji 
and the client, seller or buyer, thinks that I'm involved, and I am because I'm overseeing it, but it's not my job to do it all. There's a lot of things that someone else can do. So once we built all these systems, it was really easy for me to just kind of like, you know, slowly, slowly move away. Now, for those of you who are listening, I'm slowly moving away off screen, <laughs> but I'm still here and you still think I'm here. And it allowed me to just finally leave. And then I left and it was fine. I've got a trusted agent. He would phone people when they inquired, hey, is Keith there? We want to list our home. Oh, Keith's away right now. I'll come over and help you. No problem. Nobody argued with this. Yeah. People don't need you. People will believe whatever you tell them to believe. They trust you and therefore they trust your systems. And if your systems are good and your people are good, you can leave and they'll keep coming. Well, I think I think Keith, this has a lot to do with uh, with brand as well. Me and, and when I say brand, I mean systems. So if, if you've built a practice that actually is not about you and being on the phone every single moment in time, and people start believing that your results have a lot to do with the people around you and your team, and how you as a as a leader position your team is what the perception which becomes reality is. And, and when when people can get over their ego, I think it's easy to follow the advice that you or, or the fact that you made where you're not as important as you think, because you're not as important as you think. I have not been in a listing presentation more than three or four times in the past three or four years. Why? Because I don't need to be there. By the time my agent goes there, that business is more than likely already closed because there is trust, there is content out there doing the heavy lifting where I have created a vibe and uh, I've created a following and uh, where people feel they already know what your team will do once they start working with you. And then it's easy for me at least to send one of my agents uh, into a situation where they can come out uh, triumphant and of course with the results that, that we all seek for both the client and for us. So having that in play is huge. Yeah, I don't I don't want this to intimidate people, right? Like you don't need to be simian big. You don't even need to be and and I'm I'm a medium size real estate team. So you don't need to be Keith Roy big. You can go away for 2 weeks with no phone and no email and everything will be fine. If you build out the right team members, if you build out the right system, if you even if you just find the right referral partner for that period. And I'd find someone who, you know, if, if you're just a, a regular agent on your own, no assistant, and you're just craving two weeks off, part of what's preventing you from going on vacation and, and taking real time off is, oh, I might lose $10,000 or in Toronto, 20,000. You guys, your average commissions are huge. So I might lose $20,000 if I go away, well, a couple things. One, you can't lose money you never had. So no one's giving you 10 grand and you're losing it. Just go away. Two, find a referral partner who also wants to take time off and just make an agreement. I got your business for two weeks. You got my business for two weeks. That's it. Don't play this lottery of, oh, I'm going to lose 25% because you happen to close a deal on the listing that sold the one week I was away. That's garbage. Why should my vacation cost me five grand? And then your vacation costs you nothing while I'm doing a bunch of busy work. Just make the agreement. I'm going to cover you for two weeks. You're going to cover me for two weeks. We're done. And I might sell stuff for you and you might sell stuff for me. That's just how it goes. They're my clients. They're your clients. Everybody keeps their own thing. That's a way better way to do it. And so, it, so what, it, do you it, think, it, what do you see like, out there? Do, do you see, is it an anxiety of losing the, the that one deal? Is it they feel that they're going to disappoint the client? What is it that plays such a big factor? What do you see, Keith? Yeah, it's it's no one's afraid of the client service. It, I Very rarely does someone come to me like, oh, I'm worried that my clients won't be well taken care of. They're like, I'm worried I'm going to miss the deal. And if that client, it's the money, right? Like if, if that client happens to buy while I'm away, I lose $5,000. Well, set yourself up so you don't. And then just go away and help someone. And maybe that other person goes away and you have to close three deals for them. So be it. You got your two weeks off. Feels good. 
yeah. and didn't cost you anything. And I find it's really a conversation with the clients. Like, you know, when I know I'm slammed or even generally I have a great assistant at Matrix, Deanna. Bless you, Deanna. And uh, I will have that first conversation with my clients. I'm taking the application. I'll say, Deanna will take care of absolutely everything from here. I will jump in if there is a major issue. But trust me, you want her on it, not me. <laughs> she's better at these types of things but I've done that I've caught the fish she's gonna cook it that's it and I think if you just set those expectations from the jump they're very happy yeah you can you can empower your people too Laura like one one phrase my first assistant was a now very strong powerful early 30s functioning successful agent um, who's on mat leave now, but she, when she started, she was a young and timid 23 year old girl who was scared to go up against my high analytical clients. And I gave her this phrase and it got her out of a lot of situations. Keith asked me to, Keith asked me to send you these documents. Keith asked me to book a showing with you. Keith asked me to tell you that, you know, we're not going to get an offer from those people. Deanna asked me, you know, Laura, Deanna can say, Laura asked me to send these documents over to you. And when you get that language in place, the client doesn't differentiate between you and the assistant. And then you can, again, this is when you can show up on a weekly basis instead of an hourly basis. Yeah. And by the way, to circle back to the WhatsApp group, um, I am already a heavy WhatsApp group user. I use it to mobilize my teens, but I never thought to use it for individual deals. And yeah. it's just so much more genius than 10 email threads. Yeah. It's brilliant. Like, I'm definitely going to take that one to the bank. <laughs> yeah. Because you can, again, you can observe it from a high level as a leader or an agent. You can also, I, I can go away, I can go away for three days. Like, we, we just went away. We have a home in Whistler. Uh, we went up there for four days, uh, did some hiking and stuff. I come back, I can look at WhatsApp and I can see everything that happened. I can see all the showings, all the feedback. I know where the clients are at. I can get on the phone Tuesday morning. I can talk to people as if I was there. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I, I, I find these to be huge. Um, Keith, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> what I want to, to, to go with, and, and I want this to go kind of into our uh, wind down uh, and get into our broker's playbook, actual playbook. What I want you to leave uh, our amazing community with. Um, as a contributor to, to the real estate industry that you are, as a leader in the industry that you are, you have done things over the last 15 years that have brought you to where you are right this second, which is broker's playbook podcast. Um, the reason you're here ultimately is to be able to for any uh, broker, whether mortgage or real estate, we all have the exact same fears, thoughts, uh, wins, losses. Because uh, ultimately, if we don't, we don't get paid to not do deals. You know what I mean? So we, we got to do a deal. We got to close to get paid. If we, if we're always thinking of closing and not getting the rest we need, and not giving ourselves that creative uh, time to, to to recharge and bring new ideas and energy into our business we will fall on our faces or continue uh, living a life of 60% tired and burnt out. So I, I, I think what we're discussing today is huge. And I want you to leave us with practical and tactical steps, simple steps. Not, not that anybody can, can, can do what you did over 15 years to put the systems in place, but what can we do tomorrow in order to be able to get to a place where we can at least bring a partner in? What kind of questions should we be asking that partner? How do we establish that relationship to get some 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 respite, to be able to have a trusted partner beside us? Yeah, I, I believe the biggest impediment to all of this is the mental impediment that you can't take the time off. Th there's lots of training out there on the systems and how to hire someone and how to find someone. Honest to God, Simeon, it's just the it's the willingness and the the mental impediment to take the time off. We all know it's beneficial, but but we don't need it, right? Like, oh, I don't need it. That that feeling I have in my chest is normal. 
it's it's normal for me to want to throw my phone in the ocean every time I'm <laughs> out for a run. That's that's not normal. Like it's not normal. we over overwhelm that constant overwhelm that you you feel and you've had for one year in business, ten years in business. It's not normal. You you think it's normal, but it's not. So honest to God, the whole thing is just getting over yourself and taking the time off. And so what's the first step that people can do? They can try twice in a month to take a 24 hour period from midnight to midnight where they do no work. Now this requires a couple things. It requires you to inform your clients before you go that you're going to be unavailable for this period. So it's, it's a bit humbling to go to your clients and say, I'm taking this day off, I will be unavailable. Two, it forces you to source and educate someone on what they will need to do in the event a phone call comes in or a, a client need comes in. Again, not an emergency, just a client need. Right? It will force you to adjust your listing inventory, in even if you've got one or two listings, to adjust it in a way that it can be responded to by someone else or it can be responded to in an automatic fashion where you have predetermined showing times that are automatically approved inside of touch base or showing time or whatever you're using. Just that one 24 hour period forces you to do so many other things in order for it to be successful. So wouldn't it be great if between now and the end of the year or in quarter one, whenever you're listening to this, you just found two times that you could do this because the first time it's probably gonna fail and if it doesn't fail the first time, it's because you weren't busy enough and it'll fail in the second time when you're actually busy. But you'll learn through these failures of how people got through and penetrated your defenses, what else and what other systems you need to build so that you can just extricate yourself and be free from your business for just 24 hours. But it's so much, it sounds easy 24 hours, but there's so many things you need to build to make that work for you. My, my advice has been rest your mind if you ever want to have a chance at blowing your mind. Uh, I yeah. do believe in rest. Uh, I, I, I coach and I advise my team amongst others consistently on the importance of putting yourself first. I believe in it. I, I follow my own advice uh, to a specific uh, level, a very disciplined level, meaning that I have put a lot on my plate personally. Uh, and now I'm kind of doing the opposite. I'm trying to only take on um, extremely valuable things to me personally, not for others. So that's how where my priorities lie. But my advice consistently to an agent, whether they're six months in the business or 15 years in the business or 30 year in the business, is if you don't put yourself first, you will finish last, period because the competition is by, with no one but yourself. And if at the end of the day, you feel like shit, you are shit. If you yeah. feel satisfied and fulfilled at the end of the day, you are a winner, you are a champion, you are the world's most elite human being because it's you that you satisfy. So, so taking time off, when, when Vanessa brought this topic on, I couldn't have been more excited. It's something I believe in. That is my advice to all agents. And I just thank you so much for taking such a passionate approach to this, Keith. I appreciate it. Laura, what's your thoughts? Um, I'm still uh, reveling in that great quote, if you don't put yourself first, you will finish last. And um, yeah, I mean, we're entrepreneurs. We need that space to be creative and to be that visionary. And you can't be a visionary if you have other people's demands constantly in your head. There's no space and time to be in deep thought. And personally, that's my zone of genius, right? That quiet work where I'm not talking, I'm not listening, I'm just doing what I wanna do, reading, things like that. So um, thank you for really cementing the need for real vacations, for um, <clears throat> shaking me and Simeon out of this notion that we take vacations because we don't. <laughs> yeah, so I, I will tell you without a doubt, that was a, a big takeaway for me today. I haven't been in a real vacation ever in my life then. No, for real. Never yeah. And, never and that's, it, and it's sad. It's, it's quite sad because when you put it into perspective the way you did, Keith, 
it's not a matter of opinion, then it would be a matter of denial. A vacation, yeah. taking a trip in, in having a vacation, the, de the definition that you put that resonated, that hit home for me. So I can tell you that I've been on many, many amazing trips, but I haven't been on a single vacation. Perhaps yeah, I think I, I think Greece next year might be a really good vacation if you do it properly. Yeah. Per, perhaps I will take you on on a consult, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> I'm totally. setting myself up. Yeah, no, I was recently in Jamaica for two weeks and three or four hours every morning almost, <laughs> except for on the weekends, I was on that email like a jock, right? Like I was on it. I couldn't let it go. And that's because I didn't have systems in place to let it go. I don't regret that I was present um, to some degree, but I think I'll definitely be motivated to have those in place for my next actual vacation. And there's there's nothing wrong with that. We're, like we're in the type of business that it gives us the freedom to go on trips and work while we're on those trips. It's an important benefit of being a realtor. Mm -hmm. But don't fool yourself into thinking that that time is restorative. Mm -hmm. It's just different. Mm -hmm. Keith, give us your, your final words to a community that's desperate to hear from people like you. People value it. We get amazing feedback all the time. And I think this specific uh, show today is going to resonate with many, uh, especially, in my opinion, especially those intermediates that, that always feel trapped um, in that 12 to 20 deal cycle where they're really, it's a one man show. A one person show, I apologize. Uh, a one person show, uh, and they're always trapped in that cycle of doing everything. And it's always the people that we preach systems assistance for you to grow, you need to, to do this. I think that's going to resonate a lot. Give us your final uh, message to this uh, amazing brokers playbook community, my friend. Yeah, well, one, you're not as important as you think you are. Love it. Uh, don't act like you have a reality TV show because you don't. Uh, you're not going to get from 20 listings to f you're not going to get from 20 deals to 40 deals by yourself. You're going to need to bring someone on, and you're not going to be able to get time off until you build build the appropriate systems to set up the barriers to give yourself that freedom. Of again, just 24 hours. I'm not preaching sabbaticals. I just I just want you to take 24 hours off. Uh, I I thank you uh, a, a million thank yous, Laura. Thank you uh, for coming on this afternoon, Keith. Uh, Excellent advice. I hope people take your advice and I hope to, that people reach out to you and do pick your brain on how to better their lives. Uh, they will be ahead of themselves for it. They will put themselves first for once uh, and hopefully both their business, their clients, and they win as a result of feeling better about their business. Uh, Keith, Laura, signing off from Toronto. Everybody have a great one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.